So I went to pick up some clay for class. And the gentleman that ran the ceramic shop was named Daniel King, elderly kind of guy. And you just couldn't go in and, you know, buy something and then leave because he liked to talk. And that was probably good because it allowed me to kind of stand around and talk with him about worldly issues and whatever, blah, blah, blah. All the meanwhile, I'm looking over at this closed door knowing that that was Barney's studio. So I gathered all the boxes of clay and loaded up the car. Now, I was parked right out in front of the studio, his Barney's studio, and as well as King's shop. <clears throat> and I looked, so I, I got in the car, and before I proceed to turn the key, I looked over at his front door, and I thought, why don't you get out of the car and knock on the door? Well, then I'm thinking to myself, well, it's the 70s, and I got this big afro out there. I mean, I had a big, nice, coiffured afro. And I'm thinking, he ain't going to let me in. You know. I just started to turn the key, just as I was getting ready to turn the key. The door opened. I don't know what happened, but something said, get out of the car, get over there. So I got out of the car, walked over there very, and I didn't want to bum rush him. <laughs> I went over and I said, Mr. Bright, I'm Ed Hamilton, and I know your works, and I'm, I've seen your works around. I would just love to be able to see your studio. I think that's what I said. I'm not sure if that's what, verbatim. But I do remember what his response was. Sure, come on in. Bam. I crossed that threshold, it was over. It was over. We started talking, and he said, well, why'd you go to school? I said, well, I went to the Art Center School at that time, that's where it was. He said, well, I taught out there, you know. He taught at night. Well, Barney said, you know, I saw this piece, and it, he said it was a little rough, but, you know, I, I thought that person had uh, some possibilities, some potential, you know. I said, well, what, what, what was it? He said, well, it was a kind of a rough figure with his head bent, arm across it. I said, <laughs> I said that was my piece. Oh, really? Yeah. So now I'm, I'm in the studio, and I come in, and, and Barney said, well, you know, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. So basically, I'm just kind of the beginning, the cleanup man, you know, clean tools and take care of stuff, cover clay, you know, make sure clay doesn't dry out, that kind of stuff. Oh, by the way, and picked up the doo-doo from the dog every morning. <laughs> now, the dog had an outdoor on the back door from in and out, but no. Would he use it? No. He'd start at the front and work his way back. And so eventually, I suppose I passed the test of at least being able to do the bidding and then progress up to helping him do his works. Because that's basically what he really needs you for. You know? Now if you don't know, you can't come in, if I had not known the traditional methods of sculpting, mold making, bronze casting, uh, carving, stone carving, uh, stuff like that, he couldn't have used me. I would have just been a person who just came to clean up. I mean, really. But I think he saw enough in me to know that I had the ability at some point that he would be able or I'd be capable of he saying, okay, here, you work on this. See? So that's what it kind of got to. Now once he finished the total clay piece, then we fenced it off with these what we call shims, divided up different sections of it. And those different sections were where we actually poured plaster into them. And then once they were all, once he was all encased in plaster like a big plaster cast, pulled all those off. And then it was a matter of figuring out, okay, now what we're going to do next is pour rubber. We're going we're gonna to wet the plasters down. Then we're going to take this rubber material called black toughy. 
and do a layer of black tuffy in it. Pull the two apart, pull the rubber out. You got all the nice surface and undercuts in the resin sand that's gone off hard, see? Put the two pieces back together, stand them up, and Zender and them would melt the bronze and come over and pour the bronze into each one of those mold sections. Then we'd break them off and clean, cut off the gates and stuff that they put on there to let the metal flow into the pieces, see? And that's how that river horse was done. So then it was a matter of getting all those pieces cast and getting them to the studio and then start finally welding them all together. The head was lost wax cast in Detroit, in Pontiac, Michigan, in, at the Fine Arts Sculpture Center. And when it came back, it just was a matter of joining the head to the rest of the body, you know. We had a wonderful relationship. He would call, I'd say, hey, I got something we need to look at. I said, okay, I'd come over and look at it, you know. Then I'd call, I said, Barney, I got something you need to look at. The saddest moment of, 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 of that I can remember is when I finished the Spirit of Freedom in D.C. in clay, and it was 97, 1997, and uh, we were going on vacation, and uh, I said, I, I called Barney, I said, well, he said, I'm coming up, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come up and look at it. Then I get a call from him, he said, you know, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, well, what's the good news? He said, well, the good news is, I'm alive. <laughs> the bad news is they found a polyp on my throat, and I got to go in and get some checkup, you know, because he smoked like a fish. Long story short, went on vacation. I said, well, you know, you can come up when I get back, you know. I'll be dead calm. The day I get back, I turn on the TV, and the 11 o'clock news is on. They said, the sculptor, Barney Bright, has passed away. God, you know. So yeah, he, we, we were very close, you know. And, and, and very rare, it's not rare, if you have a good relationship with a person you work with and you keep in touch, you know, then you feel, in, uh, you, 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 you have the closeness about him, you know. Because he, he, he'd take me to lunch at his house, his wife would, uh, every season, we look forward to their uh, cr stuffed crab and avocado salad, he'd go out there. Or uh, we go to Mem's Steakhouse for lunch off of uh, 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 Brownsboro Road. It's now Pat's Steakhouse, but it used to be Mem's. And, you know, stuff like that that you don't forget. You know what I'm saying? Very caring, very uh, uh, friendly, appreciable. Uh, you know, knew no strangers. That man knew no strangers. You know, and people just come in the studio. I met all kind of people coming through that studio. I mean, I met the, the highs and the lows. It you know, didn't matter. I was, I was really like uh, the, 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 the great opening of King Tuck's tomb when they finally broke through that first royal door and they got to that other wall and they knocked a hole into that wall and stuck the candle through the hole and how it caught was leaning over his and said, what, what do you see? And the guy said, wonderful things, you know. 